Hi, Scissoring here with another video for the upcoming 3.18 3.18? Numbers are hard. 3.18 Lee, and uh, I wanted to make a buff prediction video or a combination of things that I think are likely or that I would ideally want to see buffed. And do remember that I am a hardcore solo self on player, so it might be different than how people that play softcore would feel. Now, with 3.17 and just the last patches and with spell suppression in general, we've seen a large shift towards defensive ascendancies, especially on hardcore. Obviously, on softcore, you can easily get away with being very glass cannony, and a lot of people prefer that to be able to just burst down bosses. But on hardcore, we do see like things like Champion and Necro and also Saboteur being like the main ascendancies that people want to play, and that is because they offer percentage damage reduction, especially towards any type right so you have saboteur with damage reduction of things that are blend and you have champion that gets fortify and necro which gets an insane amount of block and then you can get a large amount of effective hp as you can recover energy shield as well so you you have like multiple vectors of defense on all of these making them incredibly popular you won't need to invest that much into damage to have enough damage as long as you have between two and four million damage that's enough to kill everything including the fear on hardcore now, on softcore, people will go for a lot more to be able to just completely bypass bosses altogether, run up to a boss and just right-click it and then loot it, right? But on hardcore, we do just want to become as close to mortal as we can get. With that in mind, some ascendancies are now completely unused. Obviously, like, there's always going to be a heavy skew towards damage ascendancies being used less on hardcore, like, for example, Berserker, etc. A very heavy skew on ascendancies right now. So, for example, Trickster almost abandoned right now it used to be a very heavily used ascendancy but we do see people more going occultist even for dot builds now and trickster is just not the powerhouse that it used to be assassin is pretty much also only used for cast on crit builds or things that are very desperate for crit and elementless as well is used a lot less now and these builds just don't have that much defensive capabilities and so they aren't used a lot a lot of the melee ascendancies as well are very easily abandoned in favor of champion and surprisingly juggernaut which does have a lot of defenses it isn't used that much which is very interesting because it is insanely defensive kind of contradicts what i just said but maybe it's just not a good enough balance of damage and defense they're mostly used for accuracy stackers and other than that we just see honestly i can't even completely put my finger on it why jug is so underused compared to the others i guess it's just a combination of what builds we would play as well as being in the marauder side of the tree like marauder in general isn't super used and most people end up favoring chieftain over juggernaut um juggernaut did used to be used a lot but no longer is and something like chieftain and gladiator which are used could definitely do with a little bit of a facelift Hierophant as well, and also Guardian, maybe just feel like just missing a little bit something to be as competitive as other Ascendancies. Now, that being said, I honestly don't think Ascendancies are in the worst place they've ever been, because we are very powerful right now. Like, builds and Ascendancies are in a not too bad spot, because obviously you can do everything in the game on Hardcore on pretty much every Ascendancy. The only thing that you would, like, struggle with would probably be some Alacrim 30 and like obviously the super five-way legion uh other than that most things are pretty doable in every build even feared so it's not in the worst spot but obviously like a lot of people like when there's a very difficult choice between all the ascendancies right now for a lot of people it's very easy on hardcore unless you're really trying to like be a special snowflake you're very heavily leaning towards necro sabo and champion for your league starter and, and if you don't take those, you probably realize that, yeah, I am being at a bit of a disadvantage. I just don't want to play what everybody else is playing, which is obviously okay. Ranger's in an interesting spot because it's fairly popular on softcore, but not as used on hardcore. Raider obviously gets things like 50% 50 spell suppression, but with how incredibly easy it is to get from both gear and things like the, is it Mage Bane or Mage Blood, that new uh, keystone that converts your decks to spell suppression, it's a stuff that's so easy to get that it doesn't end up offering that much and ranger kind of struggles a little bit on life so pathfinder becomes fairly used because of the um, utility flask giving you life and then you can do the flagellant to have your utility flask basically just you're almost immune to like damage that doesn't one shot you as a very cool playstyle. but other than that it's uh, mostly just that niche mechanic 
I would, I would love to see some changes there. A little bit spread out love, especially on Assassin and Elementless and Trickster would be the ones that I would say would be cool to see something increased on. That, that being said, it is also very hard to make it like evenly spread on Hardcore Soul self fun. There's obviously always going to be more pigeonholing when you need to like focus on defenses. But also that being said, I do feel a little bit of confusion with how much they've been nerfing defenses. Like obviously old things like Zibakwa from the Glorious Vanity and things like that got nerfed. And I do find it a little bit weird because obviously the majority of the game plays softcore. But if your defenses in the game are so strong that your softcore players are opting in to actually build really tanky characters instead of going super glass cannon and just bypassing boss stages, I think that's a good thing personally, right? Uh, there's obviously a lot of bosses where, you know, even like, so I played Badger privately lately, right? Which is on softcore. And on that, I was like, oh, why would I build a tanky character? I'm just going to get 15 to 20 million damage and just clap down the bosses, right? Why would I bother engaging with the mechanic? Because defenses are nowhere near as strong on softcore as just going super, super uh, damage cannon. So I think it would be better personally if it was just so incentivized to be tanky that even on software people are like, yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't want to die often. Like most software players I know don't enjoy dying. So that is something I would love to see change a little bit more. Cool defensive options like Transcendence and Zibakwa being a little bit stronger. That being said, we did get Melding in 3.17. Melding of the Flesh, very, very cool. It makes it pretty achievable to get 90 max rest. It is a big gear investment, but that is a very cool way of doing it. Now let's talk a little bit about build archetypes. So self-casting, I would not say is in a good spot. It's very hard to balance things like that because obviously in Path of Exile, we have so many different variants or different ways of doing damage and delivering things, right? Like we have totems, we have traps, we have self-casting, we have trigger mechanisms like cast on crit and, and loads of different types of builds. So it does become very, very hard. And obviously they did try to make it so that self-casting didn't always need to use Unleash. I think it's very hard. It's either it's just the best for some builds and not for others. Like it's very difficult to, to have things like Unleash and Spell Echo not just be like the way to build it or usable at all, right? Kind of like Scion. It's either it's the best or it's not. That's it's, it's just very hard to balance. In 3.15, I think they nerfed like mana and mana being used on triggers, like cast on damage taken, cast on credits, etc. Not a big fan of that. I, I don't think mana always feels like a great thing. And at least in Path of Exile, it is a surmountable change. It is something you can fix, but I don't think it's in a good place right now. Um, and, and nerfing on niche as well. I didn't really like that. Archmage does need a rework. That would be cool to see it a little bit easier to scale. It is currently playable on the super high end. Obviously, Al Kaiser a while ago had a um, super insane Archmage build, and I think it's still after the nerf had five to ten million damage. But um, it is like an insane investment, and obviously you're better off investing in other things. So it's a cool way to build. Definitely would love to see a buff for Archmage. Um, they are always very careful whenever you are scaling your defense with your offense. Obviously, righteous fire started getting out of hand at one point, and it builds like that where you get to tie your defense to your offense is always hard to balance. And what about melee? Obviously, right now we do see melee being used. Some people are using bone shatter, some people are using lightning strike, but especially with the case of lightning strike, this isn't really melee, is it, right? It is melee. Are we ever going to get to a point where strike skills and super close range things are going to be very strong? I think it is very difficult to, to balance. You obviously have had in the past things like Molten Strike being insanely strong. Um, and that has been nerfed for a good long while now. And right now, Omniscience is very, very popular. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if that gets nerfed in 3.18. But they also have said no nerfs. So, or at least they're hinting at no nerfs. I honestly thought it was pretty cool when we had the two-handed slam builds with the um, with the Impaler. It was a very active playstyle, and I think giving that kind of power for that kind of active playstyle is pretty okay. I uh, I think it's fairly reasonable that anything like Blade Blast, Blade Fall, Essence String Contagion, um, and any skills like the more active a skill is, the better it is, and that like yeah, you can do everything with a just you know right click build, but 
I think it's okay that the, the more advanced or the more active the playstyle is, the stronger it is. Um, first of all, it's Vortex, which I fucking hate playing myself, but the people that do, they probably should get a little bit of an extra boost for, for bothering with that. It's, it's hard to balance because you have such a large amount of players that don't want to deal with that and they do want to just right click and at the same time they do want to have the most powerful build. So it's a, it's a tough one, but uh, I do think it is fair. Deal wielding is not really in a good spot. You don't get enough defense or offense to really justify it. So you see people generally going two-hander or very often just one-hander in shield, especially on hardcore. Deal wielding hasn't really seen as much of a use as the removal of stat stick. Basically, what we used to do was you would have a one-hander and then you would have a second one-hander that didn't work with the attack. So, for example, last raid can't be used with maces. Um, pretty sure. Here we such a massive game. Hard to remember everything. But I'm pretty sure last raid can't be used with maces, right? So you would do a sword in your one hand and you would have like a mace or something with loads of faces extra in your other hand to just get the buff from that without using it. But you're still getting the dual wheel bonus. Uh, I thought that sticking was very cool, and um, we just haven't seen it since. And Whirling Blades as well is not in a great spot. The problem with Whirling Blades is it's a little bit clunky. It's got a weird minimum distance, and also when you get to a fast enough speed, you start going backwards. You're like chop, chop, back, chop, chop, back. So it's uh, a little bit of an annoying skill. But that being said, this is sort of like the main things that I would like to see in, in buffs for a lot of these things. I would also love to see some changes to the Atlas passive skill tree, like just some additions, some changes. I, I think it's the coolest thing they've ever added and just mixing it up is always exciting. It'll be interesting to see what they do in 3.18. I would love to see more bosses as well, or buffing bosses, especially please buff like the, maybe not the Steering X-Arch, but the uh, Eater Worlds just needs one additional move. It just feels very much like a non-fight right now. And there's only so many times I am going to be able to mentally process hearing hunger in 3.18 without going absolutely batshit crazy. I, I doubt we're getting new bosses in 3.18. They normally only add that for expansions. But some people have theorized that we will be getting a uber version of um, Eater and Staring x because they were so easy. That is all I can think of, and I hope you guys are excited for 3.18. I know I am. League starts always good. Thanks for watching. Tell me if you liked the video, but more importantly, where did I? Well, that's what I do.